Good evening, and welcome to Sir Broadcast. I'm your host this evening, Ardell, and with me is the brilliant mind of Scott Hobgood, the creator and host of Beyond Normal Boundaries, and the jazz master, Chuck Slaughter. <laughs> you love that, don't you? <laughs> uh, he is the creator and the host of The Need to Talk. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. How are you, Ardell? I'm doing very well. Good. Thank you. Good. Um, this evening, I'd just kind of like to go over some things with you guys so our listeners will, you know, kind of get to know you a little bit. So um, if you don't mind, Scott, I'd like to start with you and just ask, uh, just tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Scott Hobgood, and uh, I'm living in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I've had a life where I've spent a lot of time moving around and seeing different parts of the world. and. Uh, experiencing things through experience as averse to reading or looking at pictures in a book which I thought was sort of my I just noticed that in growing up that being a poor student that uh, that things seemed to make more of an impact on me by just experiencing things like you know traveling all over the world and seeing different geographical sites and uh, you know the way Gaia looks like and and the people that live in different regions of the world and having different languages and different, uh, you know, just a different culture by comparison to being an American. And uh, so uh, some of the places that I've been to is uh, I lived in Panama, Central America for a couple of years. Uh, I've lived in various parts of the United States from Charlotte, North Carolina, to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, to Southern Oregon, um, parts of, you know, down in Charleston, South Carolina. So you said basically that you were, wasn't really a big fan of school, so your uh, schooling is a school of hard knocks, is that what you're trying to tell me? Yeah, it's a like school of hard knocks, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, there's something to be said about experience, though. It, it uh, gives us a lot more wisdom, I think, uh, to experience things rather than just to read. Yeah, and the way that I look at that is, to me, experience is something that is a gift, you know, a gift from God, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, that in order to have your conversation with God is to look at your own experiences with life and and see what that has brought you because oftentimes experience is going to be more truthful to what's going on than what you read from or look at from some other source that is just basically uh, someone's perspective. You said that uh, since you've traveled around a lot, I presume obviously you've met a lot of different people from various different cultures and various different religions and stuff. So uh, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that. Um, yes, I have. I've noticed that, uh, well, most of the countries that I've been to um, have been in some aspect of, you know, Christianity. But I have been to Israel before, and I have seen, you know, um, some of the historical things of where, you know, where Christianity supposedly has come from. Right. And, uh, good question. I'm not real sure how to answer that. Well, that's okay. I was just kind of setting you up so that uh, you can kind of tell me a little bit about um, your show that you're going to be hosting, Beyond Normal Boundaries. Yeah, uh, Beyond Normal Boundaries, uh, the reason I chose that title is because even though I have my interest more in, in metaphysical, uh, which is, you know, beyond, uh, beyond physical, it also, it makes up the physical reality as well, and I wanted something that would give me flexibility to cover just about any subject, no matter how esoteric it was or, or how uh, conspiratorial it might be from... Uh, from it because if, talking about these things is beyond boundaries where society society kind of keeps people in check you know by the right. you know by the way that we've been brought up in our various religions that anything that you think outside a particular boundary or out you know outside the box yeah yep. outside the box I like boundaries that's that's better um, you know society has been taught that you no you can't do that you've got to stay within a certain context of what our understanding or normalcy. Is normalcy right and so my desire is to move outside the comfort zone and get into the areas that are not normally talked about 
you know, just explore it to see if it, you know, to see what is really there. Uh, my, my feeling about it is, is the reason why we've been taught not to go beyond a certain, uh, a certain boundary is uh, because there, our growth has tried to be stemmed, but I believe that we are waking up as a race of people on this planet and we're moving beyond uh, we're moving beyond an old aspect of ourselves, and the only way to to expand to another uh, uh, higher resonant level of being humanity is to explore outside those boundaries and to find out what's there, and to make a decision as far as what that means to us on a personal basis, and and also as a as a uh, from a mass, you know, from a lot of people's perspective. Very so. exciting. Very exciting. I'm looking forward to that. Do you tell me a little bit uh, what your uh, perspective is on uh, the opportunity that Sir Broadcast has given you? What is your goal or what is your hope to accomplish with it? Well, my hope to accomplish with it is to play a part in this expansion that I feel that humanity is going through and uh, to play some part in, in being involved in that process. Very good, very good. How did you uh, come about Sir Broadcast? Well, um, a good friend of mine that I've been friends with for about eight years uh, has been talking to me and other people that we work with um, about doing some type of business adventure, and we all kept, you know, him and hawing and just kind of sloughing him off, you know, talking about Robert Burley. And uh, finally, he came back one day, not too, uh, not too far back from now, and he said, hey, I'm going to put together an online uh, uh, communication station that's going to involve video and, uh, uh, and audio, and I'd like for you to be a part of it. And I was excited about it because this is something that just sort of happened for me naturally, an avenue for me to be who it is that I'm choosing to be. And here it is. It just came out of nowhere. I wasn't trying or anything. So I, I'm excited about it. Uh, we're, I'm very excited, too. Um, thank you very much. I can't wait to see some of what you've got to share with us. Thank you. All right. Now my uh, my buddy, the uh, yeah. <laughs> Chuck Slaughter. I am so, so uh, sorry about that. I didn't want to uh, mess up a, a second time we were okay. doing this live. <laughs> <laughs> Composing yeah, this, yourself. That's right. That's <laughs> this is take two, right? That's right. This is take two. Chuck Slaughter, I am so, so happy to have you here. Why don't you um, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Well, my name's uh, Chuck Slaughter. My given name uh -huh. is Ulysses, and uh, actually I'm the third. But uh, my father gave me the name Chuck, so I wouldn't have to go through a lot of trials and tribulations <laughs> that he went through. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Chuck Slaughter, born in St. Petersburg, Florida, but only stayed there for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an Army brat, if you will. Another fellow traveler. Yeah, but not quite as extensive as Scott. Um, I've, I've lived in Texas and uh, Birmingham, Alabama uh, during the late to mid-60s. And, and you're black. That's uh, yes, and uh, that's, that's a story. That was, I'm sure I'm. That, that was quite an experience. I can imagine. Quite an experience. Definitely during those times. Yeah, and uh, I lived in Germany, and so I've I've done some traveling. Like I said, not quite as extensive as, as Scott, but I do agree with Scott that it does give you a different perspective. I know some experiences can have a positive or negative effect on you. It all depends on, on you know your reaction to them, but um, I've I've had quite a few experiences, and hopefully they have affected me in a positive manner and not negative. So, <laughs> so <we laughs> hope. the jazz man, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah. So, um, but after that, I've I've um, gone to different schools. Like Scott, I wasn't that great in school, um, but uh, met my wife in school, and we had three children. Right on. And uh, three beautiful daughters. I would call their names because I know they're listening. But um, 
but oh, they, please they, do plug it. We love uh, to have the plug up to babies. <laughs> Tanya, Crystal, and Yolanda. So, well, hello, ladies. Yes, yes. Three beautiful daughters, and uh, very proud of them all. Good. But uh, I, uh, after that, you know, just playing music, fell in love with music at a very early age, um, and not just R and B, but you know, plenty of pop. Uh, I owe my jazz, uh, I guess, initiation to my stepbrother, who is uh, now living in Sacramento, California. But uh, I can remember one of the first albums that he brought home, or the, one of the first albums that I can remember uh, was one by Jimmy Smith, who's a B3 jazz organist. And it was uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? And I. After I know that, that song, Ashley. Yeah. yeah. yeah how, uh, how old were you, if you don't mind me asking? Gosh, when you I got, was, I was when about he, 15. He turned you on to, about really? 15, that old? About 15, I was actually yeah. surprised, you know. So yeah. Sometimes people that, especially that just music just grabs onto them, usually something gets them and it's a little younger than that. Well, you, there was you something just about know. He, he just loved jazz. Yeah. And I'm, I can't tell you when he started loving it, but I know that he introduced me to it. So, uh, so ever since that, that one record, I just, I've, I've loved jazz. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert, let's say. Right. I don't know about I that. Love, <laughs> I, I love the music. Yeah. I love the music and have for quite some time. Well, tell me something. Tell me a little bit about your show, uh, The Need to Talk. I'm really excited to hear about this. Well, the, the Need to Talk came, I guess, came about. It's gone through a couple of name changes, iterations of names, you know, but um, in talking to friends and just talking around the workplace, mm -hmm. um, I realized that people, laymen, not the professors and, and, and professional broadcasters and people like that, they, they weren't the only ones that could talk. <laughs> right. Everybody has conversations. Everybody has thoughts. Everybody has a perspective on something. And, uh, and just talking with the people at work, talking with friends, um, I realized that we could have conversation and not want to go at each other's throat. You know, we could yeah, have, have contrasting opinions right, about we, what's we, going on. Agree to have, disagree. Exactly. We could have differing opinions. And I also realized in those conversations that you could hear something that might just change Absolutely. your mind or, or, you know, take you in a different direction. So um, uh, with my relationship with Scott and, of course, my relationship with, with uh, Robert Burley, who initially I wanted to just play music, uh, but Robert was, was insistent, more or less, that we do something else. We talk. And, uh, and uh, what really solidified it for me was I was talking to a friend in Mississippi. And they were saying that they were just <sighs> tired. They didn't want to talk about this anymore. And I said, maybe we just need a grassroots, you know, people at our level talking, hashing things out. And you'd be and really surprised how much, how educated and how really brilliant minds, how many brilliant minds are out there that aren't, obviously aren't recognizable, you know, just mm -hmm. because you're not in the spotlight definitely doesn't mean that you don't have a brilliant exactly. mind and things to say exactly. and, and your voice should be heard, Exactly. you know. So, so I decided, okay, let's do that. Let's wonderful. I'm that, excited so. about that. I'm well, excited to hear too. about some of your subjects. You know, I've had the golden opportunity mm -hmm. to chat with you uh, prior to, you know, our broadcasting. Right. So I I know uh, I'm a little excited about it. Yeah. So you got to go with them there on, on what the sort of broadcast means to you on the this opportunity. Well, from from um, I guess from a high level. Um, Sir Broadcast means to me that a person who has the desire and inclination to do something uh, can do it. You can push and do it. But at this level down here, um, Sir Broadcast means to me that there is a platform for people like Scott and myself and others 
um, who don't necessarily, uh, you won't see on ABC or NBC, MSNBC, Fox News or whatever. But these are the people that walk around every day uh, that make up this country. And they have a voice. And I think it's time that we were heard, you know, at, at least on some level. And I think Sir Broadcast gives us that platform. Absolutely. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me this evening. And thanks to our listeners. Um, I'm very excited, and I hope everyone else is, to um, get to experience and enjoy both of your guys' show. We have uh, Miss Monique Alexander, which couldn't be with us this evening, and her, The Uncanny. I'm right. really excited about uh, what she has to say and what she's got going on. We've all had the opportunity, obviously, to spend a little time with her and, you know, do 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 Yes. So yes. Uh, I'm really excited <laughs> about that. So thank you, everyone, for joining us, and I'll see you next week. Well, thank you, Ardell. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thanks.